Hey Aqua fans, my name is Steve Shiger. I'm a solution architect at Aqua Security and in this video I'm just going to install Aqua. Simple. I'm going to do it the hard way though, or the way that I like, and that's using just straight up YAML, using the documentation we have available, and I'm going to go through the whole process. I'm going to install the Aqua server, I'm going to install a POC database, the gateway, enough enforcers for all of my nodes, and even a spare scanner. So you can come along with me, watch what I do, see what success looks like so that you feel confident when you're doing your install. All right, here we go. All right. In this video, I'm going to be installing Aqua into an AKS cluster. Now, I'm going to, first thing you would probably do is think, all right, is my cluster up and running? So maybe I'll do a, a get pods. Yeah, okay, yeah, there's a bit of evidence, in fact, that it is AKS. That's good. But I've got nothing else running in it at the moment. It's a pretty clean slate. I could even do a check the entire state. Yeah, okay, yeah, looks pretty good. I've got three Q proxies, so I've got three nodes. That's, that's good. That's what I would expect. Now, if I were going to be installing Aqua into this in advance of any applications, I would go to my help. Now I'm going to back out. I'm already on the instructions. Normally you would go to a how to get started, and you wait for that to load, of course, and you would read all this with absolute glee and intent. And then you would see deployments. You would see all the different platforms we support, like Docker only. That's how we started. Docker Swarm. Uh, some rare ones, some more common ones, but I, I'm just going to use plain vanilla. I can see Azure down there, but I'm just going to go straight Kubernetes because that's what I prefer. I like to see, I like YAML. I want to play with YAML. And this means I understand everything that's happening. Let's do caveats for really old Kubernetes, fine. I'm going to ignore system requirements, although you should read that. I'm going to go straight to what I need to do. So the first preliminary actions. I need to create a namespace within which Aqua can reside. And I've done that already. So you don't have to sit through that. Um, I can just say Aqua get namespaces and you'll see I've already got that there. And I've even done the next set. I've created a secret ooh, in my Aqua namespace. There it is, Aqua registry. The next two steps. And the reason I've done that, obviously, is I don't want to give you my Aqua username and password. Those are the credentials that you get sent when you get an Aqua license or for a POC or a commercial license. So you'll get your, your login credentials there, and that's what you'll need to have access to the registry. Now, in a production environment, you'd probably take our containers out of the Aqua registry and put them into a local registry for yourselves, in which case this would be your password. But anyway, you didn't need to see mine, so I've got this done in advance. Something I, I, I think it's always worth noticing is that there's an equal sign here. I always get caught out because when I'm doing parameters, I forget. Don't do, don't, don't, don't be a Steve and don't forget that. So just a little, little tip. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a secret for my Aqua database. Now this may be something you only need to do during a POC because you're probably only going to use the Aqua database pod in a POC, otherwise you'd be using something like Azure Postgres in an AKS environment. But I need to do this, oh, I'm gonna do that now. And I need to create a password. So I'm not just gonna cut and paste this over, I'm gonna do it in sections. All right, and I'm gonna create a super clever password. Um, let's see, what would that be? Maybe, uh, let's call it uh, password. Yes, yes, that's secure, let's do that. Password one, just to really catch out the baddies. And I want to do that in my namespace. All right, fantastic, and it's done. All right, next I need a service account. And there's a variety of reasons for that. And you can see, I always get confused about our own documentation. Um, I'm gonna copy that completely. In some cases, we say, save this into a file. You can use it again later. In this one, we don't, but it's essentially the same thing. I'm creating a service account. I'm going to call it Aqua SA. Uh, it's going to pull the Aqua registry, so it's kind of taking care of a bit of business for me. So I should just be able to paste that one, right? Yes, and that works just fine. 
Great. Almost there. Here, I'm going to create an Aqua CSP YAML. And there's a whole lot of stuff in there. So what we'll do is we're just going to copy that, not going to blindly use it. And I am going to create an Aqua CSP YAML, YAML by man. I'll paste all that in. Looking good. Let's roll up to the top and take a look at what we're doing here. Now, the first thing in here, there's a cluster role binding, cluster role created, and that's going to be assigned to the service account we just created. Okay, there's a few reasons for that. When we take a look at, at Risk Explorer in our eventual installation, a lot of the capabilities we require are around the discovery of these things. So we need to get all of that information. So that's, that's necessary. And then we move down, we can see that I'm in one big clump. I've got the service for the AquaDB pod. Again, optional. If you're not using RDB, then you don't need that. Same for the deployment. I'm going to pull the password that out of the one we just created. Okay, excellent. And it's going to set that up. It's going to create the schema. There's nothing we need to do really there. In terms of maintaining the Postgres database within Aqua, it's kind of all taken care of by Postgres. Uh, sorry, sorry, by Aqua. So that's going to create that pod. I can see I'm creating the service now for the Aqua Web, which is the console or server. We use a lot of names to describe this. It can get confusing, but it's going to show up as our Aqua Web in this particular instance. And I'm going to expose a few ports, 4438, 443, 8080s, what I'm going to use. I'm not going to be creating certs for this deployment in this video. I just want to get an Aqua up and running. It's kind of what you would do in a proof of concept. You can see making connections to the database along the way. That's fine. It's worth noting at this point, you see there's two databases. There's the Scalog DB user, et cetera, DB host, and then there's the Scalog audit. Worth noticing that if you're setting your own database up because we do store audit messages in a separate location from the rest of the database, essentially. I'm going to roll down. We can see the service for the gateway. It's worth understanding that gateways are an aggregator of communication from enforcer types back to our console. It's a, it's a scaling thing. Having a three-tier architecture makes it a lot easier for, as you auto-scale nodes out, to not create a, a total infrastructure nightmare trying to whitelist new nodes with new IP addresses to talk back to our console. So that's really important. I like this little piece here. A little bit of what if we need to run as a non-privileged account, right? Just uncomment these things. For, for now, it's a POC. I'm going to leave everything as privileged, which is in some people's interests and maybe not in others, but for now, it looks like I can leave this as is, which I like. Very cool. I'm going to save that out. And if all goes well, I should be able to just deploy that with a K create. All right, let's, is that the next piece of advice? No, we're talking about SSL. This is where it's here, but I'm not going to do that. It's an optional step, so I'm going to skip it. And we can see I've used the same naming convention. I can just copy that, paste that in, and away we go. And everything's created. That looks pretty cool. I should be able to watch that all play out. Excellent. So let's let's fast forward time until that's done. Okay, we're back. That didn't take long at all. That was about two minutes and a little bit of my battery, I have 12% left. So I don't have any enforcers running and I don't have any additional scanners running, but I'm okay with scanners because there's a scanner built into AquaWeb. So I should be able to integrate registries and scan images already. Now, if I've got a very bloated registry, I might want to add a scanner. So let, let's take a look at that as a next step, shall we? We can roll down here I'll skip through all this and go straight to the bottom when we look at creating a scanner. Okay, well, I'm just going to copy that. It's just telling me to cut and paste again. And I'm going to buy Aqua Scanner. Oh, yeah. Just paste that in again. Exit that out. And again, I've got that information I need about running as non privileged, which is nice. Looks pretty straightforward, though. There's not really much there. So I'm just going to save that out. Uh, what was I need noticeable is that there is a scanner user, 
and scan their password. Now, I don't have those yet, so I can't really do that yet, but I'm ready to go. Okay, just to recap, I've got a YAML for deploying additional scanners, which is optional. I don't necessarily need it right now, but it's nice to have because it was there in the instructions. But earlier, I deployed the Aqua server, a POC database, and a gateway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go check to make sure those are up and running, and I'm going to use the interface, the UI, to create YAML for my enforcer deployment. And I'll explain a little bit more about why I'm doing it that way. There is some template YAML in the docs, but I like to use the one that is generated by the UI for a few specific reasons. So let's dive in and I'll show you that now. Okay, we're back and I've cleared my slate and I'm gonna take a look at what it all looks like at the moment. And it looks pretty good. I've got the pods that I expected and they're running and they look healthy. I've got a service created and I've created the Aqua Web as a load balancer, which means Azure has automatically allocated an external IP, which is great. I can see my deployments. I can see my very basic replica set set up. I can't see my secrets. That's fine, but I know they're there. I think it's now moment of truth. Let's take this and take a look at 8080 over here and see what we get. I took a look at it earlier just to be absolutely certain things didn't go wrong. And yay, it's working. So what I'll do is I'll enter a super complicated password here. And I need to post in my license. Don't need LastPass for that. And I'm going to pause here so you don't see my license. And there we go. I pasted my license and I accept that. And I am in. I've got a clean slate. This is a great start. So. I could click through all of this, but I haven't done anything yet. So really I'm not gonna find anything of any use. So what I really need to do now is enable the scanner and enable those enforcers so that I can get a little bit more information into my environment. All right, to get the scanner up and running, I need to make sure I've got a scanner role created. Now that we saw that in our YAML, I'm going down to users and roles. I can see I've got the administrator that's there by default. I'm gonna add a user. I'm gonna call this user my scanner. I'm going to give it a, a password. There we go. And then we'll give it the scanner role. And you can see the scanner role is just REST API permissions for the purposes of scanning. So it's a really limited role. I can't log in and use it. Scanner is optional and I don't need an email address. So now I know I've got my password there. And let's save that out. Great. Now I'll add that to my scanner YAML just to keep consistency. So let's go back over here. Let's take a look. I've got my Aqua scanner. And then there were those users down in argument that I need here. And I just pretty straightforward stuff called that scanner. And I called this 2020. And that should be fine. Host Aqua Web, that's the internal host address. And I have called it Aqua Web, so that actually should be just fine. So I'm gonna save that out. All right. And now I'm gonna deploy my scanner. Let's do k create dash f aqua scanner .yaml. So while that's playing out, I'm gonna jump back over here and I'm going to start setting up my enforcers. So let's click in enforcers. I can see I've got a few default groups created. Uh, this one's for standard enforcers. This is, this is for Piddle, PAS enforcers, and this is for VM enforcers. And I don't want to use my default group. The default groups are there primarily for when enforcers get deployed without any level of scope. So let's keep those. It's kind of a catch-all, but if you want to learn more about enforcer mm -hmm. groups, watch the video on enforcer groups. You need an enforcer group to create an enforcer, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to call it dev group. My orchestrator, I know it's Kubernetes, but you can see there's lots of different options there. My service account, if I remember, is called Aqua SA, and I know my namespace is called Aqua. Standard runtime, logical name, dev group. 
And the installation token, I don't need to supply this. It will generate a really cool, complicated one for me. So I don't need to be concentrating or focusing on that right now. It generated the image name based on the current version that I have installed, so that's fine. I don't really need a description. And I want a few settings by default. So I'm not going to scope this on particular labels or registries. And if you want to learn more about that, again, there's a separate video about enforcer groups. But I'm going to enable some of the main staples of what enforcers do, just to be sure. And I want to enable this auto discovery because I like that as well. And I think I'm going to keep those enabled as well. So it's pretty fully featured, but it's going to be in audit mode by default. If that, that looks good. Let's create the group. And what's cool about this is that it generates the code I need. So I can close that. I don't need to copy it right now. We can see that it's there. There's no enforcers in it right now. I'm going to use the dot, dot, dot to go back into the group. I'm going to grab all of this YAML here. And I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to create my Aqua Enforcer YAML. No need to modify it because it was custom created for my world. And now I can say, okay, create dash f aqua enforcer.yaml. Amazing. And it's off. So I'm going to clear. I'm going to do a k get all dash n aqua. And I can see things starting to play out, which looks good. I can see my agents creating. I've got three nodes, so I should see three agents creating. This is all good so far, which is nice. So this is going to take some time. So let's speed it up and just go skip to the end. And there we go. We can see those are up and running. You can see 86 seconds. That didn't take very long, did it? Nice. I'm going to go over here and look at my enforcer screen and I can see now, hey, I've got three happy enforcers connected there. And that means a lot of things should start to happen. If I go to Risk Explorer, Presto, I've got an instant view of my environment. And if I had different applications deployed, I would see all of them here. And my environment should start scanning this as well. So I should start to see my scan queue start to populate with different things that we're finding on the host nodes. Um, so the next thing I would do here is I would start to add integrations like image registries, maybe my serverless applications, etc., all of the above, so that I can get a better view of my risk posture. But I'm already off to a good start with scanners, enforcers, and I've got the console up and running in my world. Not too bad. Nice. So I've got my Aqua console, I've got my POC database, I've got my gateway, I've got three enforcers, one per node deployed as a daemon set using the code that I generated from the UI, and I've got a spare scanner in there as well. So I'm pretty much good to go. Now all I really need to do is deploy my applications, maybe attach some registries and take a look at my risk posture. But I'm gonna do that in a separate video and give you a little tour of the interface, okay? For now, I'm Steve Jaguar from Aqua Security and this is an Aqua install.